This candy cane is a big Bama, so I knew I was gonna need a support system, like this piece of cardboard that is 19 by 13 inches. And of course, let's not forget the tumbling tower block. Now people, if I'm being 100 with you, I scoured the internet to see if I could find something that I could even mimic for a build for this candy cane, and I found nothing. With that being said, I will spare you all the footage that I went through trying to find a build that would make sense for this candy cane and came up with this one. And even once I was satisfied with how I was creating the stem here, when I got to the tippy top, I still, <laughs> it had its struggles. And at this point I was already like, well, we might as well open another box because I don't see an end in sight here at the current moment. <laughs> And here's where we landed, minus the two little square nubs you see in the corner up there. I didn't end up using them. And then I decided to get a little professional on y'all and bring in my little white chalk marker and let y'all know how many tumbling blocks I used in the sections. So if anybody wants to recreate this joint, you have exact numbers, which, you know, absorb this people because it's not something I always <laughs> typically take time to do okay so it's 27 in the total center of the length of our stem here and then nine on each side of the stem giving you a total of 18 look at my little arrows I'm drawing for you our little hook piece has six and then on each side is two giving you a total of 10 blocks just to create our little hook and then the actual bridge from one side to the next has a total of nine. And then I put one on the outside of each. People go about this whatever way you want. I'm showing you how I did it. And I decided to take a pencil and trace the candy cane. And then I cut it down to size to meet the trace. I decided to still use my favorite type on wood glue and some hot glue to attach the pieces. Only I smeared the wood glue on the cardboard and left some gaps so this way I could put the hot glue in between, ensuring that we're going to have a long hold and a quick hold so I can just keep attaching the tumbling blocks. I also made sure that as I was stacking these on top of one another that I was stopping to lift the candy cane up to make sure that they were all holding and it was still straight. Nothing would have pissed me off more than I got all the way to the top and realized that everything was completely lopsided. When I got to the top, I could have just went straight up and then went over, but I wanted to just leave a little space. And again, you create this how you want. I was building this with my own imagination. So it made sense to me the way that I was putting it together. And I love the end result anyway, so I'm really happy with how it's constructed. I did not feel fuzzy inside at all trying to create something this big and not have a brace for it. Absolutely, you could do this without the cardboard. I just did not want to take a chance when everything just eventually falling apart, even though we still had these struggles. Because I didn't put wood glue and hot glue in between, the actual blocks and just mostly put it on the cardboard, I did have some issues with the cardboard bending. So to save more time and struggle of that happening later after the project was finished, I just took a minute with a paintbrush and went in between every little section that I could and smushed as much wood glue in there as I could. I let this dry for a couple hours and then came back in with an X-Acto knife and trimmed any excess that was dangling over of the cardboard from around our towering tumbling blocks. Because the piece is almost two feet long, I thought it would be in our best interest to pop some paint sticks on the back of this joint for some extra stability. And I use the wood glue and the hot glue, just going in like a straight section throughout the middle and including our little walkway and the hook on the opposite side, <laughs> the little walkway to the opposite side of the candy cane. And I'm pretty happy with the build. It's not flimsy at all now that it's all dried up. It's been a couple days and it's doing really well. Obviously paint your candy cane whatever color you want people. I'm going with the good old traditional red and whites and I'm using Waverly's white chalk paints giving it nice coat and I only had to do one coat. It went on really well and then I dried it on up. Now I'm taking the painter's tape and starting with our hook 
And the reason why I decided to start on this side is because I was nervous that if I started on the longer side with our two red mixed paints, I'm taking two of these to mix together to get one color just because I didn't think it would turn out the way I want it if I just used one or the other. That's just how my creative brain works, okay? You painters, whatever color red you want. Okay, maybe you just got one color. I'm using two. Anyhow, back to why I'm putting the painter's tape on the way that I am at the end of the hook. I was scared that if I came up the long ends, that by the time we got to the short ends, I wouldn't have my stripes going in a way that made sense across the walkway, you know, from one side of her candy cane to the other. So I decided to start with the small ends and then work our way. And I even like did this stripe kind of slanted to give it the appearance that, you know, it's spinning. I'm not sure if anybody else, you know, sees the vision here, but in my mind, it makes sense. A little help to reduce some bleed through is to make sure that your paintbrush is practically dry and then start where the painter's tape is doing little dry circles. You could also paint over the painter's tape with white paint, let that dry, and then come in with your red paint or use Mod Podge. I find that this technique is super quick and really effective. Once that dry paint is all on there, then just go over with some more red paint. Now, people, don't let me perpetrate here. I pretended like I was going to show y'all how I greened this up. However, I did not. <laughs> I did not really get into it, but I did put, you know, this little metal ribbon around our candy cane here and I made some greenery and a little ribbon and it was very tiresome. This was probably the most difficult thing of all of it for me, but I absolutely love how this candy cane turned out. Let me know if you guys plan on making one this season. two tumbling blocks lots of two tumbling blocks actually and to create the bonds we're going to use wood glue and hot glue i use tight bond and i put it inside of a crafter square little glue bottle i empty out the glue pour the tight bond in there and it's a nice little you know trick to have something small just to get these going when you need just a little smush of the wood glue now be mindful because your hot glue is going to kind of ooze out in between your tumbling blocks however i found this nifty little tool i used to use my fingernail but now i'm using this nifty little tool if you don't wait until it's fully dry like it's a little warm still but it's formed it comes off so satisfyingly and you do have a pile of bits like this we just mm, kind of toss them out there see our two by twos over there we got twos and twos and twos everywhere well it's just easier for me to glue them together and then i started piecing our rows because we are making a tumbling block star in case you don't know i do diy related browsing on my channel to help you budget and plan and save and get inspired and found this star at the at home store on one of my browsing trips and i felt inspired to recreate it into a tumbling block diy we're going to create our center using 10 tumbling blocks for the very middle seven for the under part of the middle and then six for the top part over the middle and then we're just going to use our wood glue and our hot glue to attach those three rows together before we start branching off and creating our top and our two legs as you can see here your bottom row is not going to be evenly on top of the tumbling blocks and that's fine now this row however is going to be directly on top of your tumbling blocks so the tumbling blocks will completely line up and for those of you that are like oh it needs to all you know layer the same listen you're not going to see it we're going to cover it with some florals okay calm down then we're going to go over with four tumbling blocks three tumbling blocks two and one for the top of our star Once you have this put together, we are going to start assembling our two lakes. 
this is where we're going to need to make like a little indent so the next row is only going to have five tumbling blocks and i thought you guys should hear what i have to deal with in the background while i'm trying to build this thing now hurt your stomach but you're good you can survive what what we're all hungry did you eat breakfast Y'all always act like ain't nobody trying to feed you. <laughs> you have all had like breakfast and snacks. I mean, come on, it's 12 o'clock. Wes was on his way home with pizza for the football game and my kids are arguing over who's getting the first slice. <laughs> Anyhow, back to these legs. For the top part of the legs, we're just doing three tumbling blocks on each side and then we're coming down with two. And then I'm just kind of popping the two out slightly, not a full tumbling block length, just slightly because I wanted them to be in further than the actual like middle part of the star. I didn't want them coming out that far. So take a screenshot right here so you can, guys can get a good look at it. <laughs> and then we're gonna spray paint. Once it's all dry, now it's time to put our florals on here. I like to use a little base for my florals. You know, any kind of piece of wood or cardboard would do fine and load it up with some glue and then just start attacking this. I'm terrible at florals. I do attempt <laughs> make the best effort possible, but as you can see me struggling here, I'm just kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna stick this on here and pray that it looks nice in the final reveal. <laughs> And that's it for this one, people. Let me know what you think. This year I think about how I'm so lucky to have a place that I can come home to. Yes, I am on my way. We'll put our differences aside. I gotta be honest, people, I was a little bit nervous with the idea of building this tumbling tower block Christmas tree because the top is slanted and I know that the hot glue will hold it in place, but I was worried that the weight of it was going to cause it to tumble back and forth. So we'll get you will get there. I will show you guys what I'm talking about. To start this off, we're going to need a lot of two by twos. Now for the base, I'm doing, see how the two by twos, I'm gluing two by two together and you will need two sets of these. So it'll be eight total blocks just for the base of our tree. I will tell you, I used almost an entire block <laughs> of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree to create this piece. Not the whole thing, but again, you can make this as big as you want. I'm just giving you guys the idea. So after I had these all in their two by two little partners, I started gluing on the base. This, the whole bottom piece that I have right here that you see me gluing it onto, I just had that laying around and I thought this would be perfect <laughs> for the bottom of this. Use whatever you want. If you want to use tumbling blocks to create a base, do it. So here's where I started with the construction of trying to figure out how to angle this. Now, my girlfriend, Angela Jones DIY, she has built stuff like this before with tumbling tower blocks and she will use a little dowel to put in between. So she, you got like a place to press the tumbling blocks onto and apply a lot of glue. And I'm using this little bit here. And of course, you know, <laughs> I, I think I just at this point like seeing where the pieces end up once I chop them in half. But I'm loading up the center right here with the glue and then we're going to put our little bit right there is our brace brace and we're going to start applying the tumbling blocks on the sides and going up to create our tree effect. For the entire thing I just did two by two. So each side of our tree here will have four tumbling blocks and I used tacky glue I know tacky glue <laughs> I usually use wood glue and hot glue but I had the tacky glue kind of just sitting right next to me and 
I'm low on wood glue and you know you got to tip it over and then squeeze it out and I was like it was just easier to use the tacky glue for this and I gotta be honest with you it worked out really flipping well I was not disappointed at all so you can see me hesitating every time I go to put on the next layer because one I was trying to move the tumbling blocks around so they were not all facing the same exact way so once I put the stain on here it would have different variations in the tree and two I wanted to make sure that the layers were shorter than the next layer so if I put it the opposite way it definitely was not hanging in it was hanging over if that makes sense so it took me a little bit as I went up the tree just to make sure the placement was perfect in total this took about 50 tumbling blocks and I let this sit and dry for about three hours before I came back in to do anything to the piece if you want to stain them beforehand you go right ahead I usually come back in and do that afterwards now I am spraying this with water I know you guys are like what the hell are you doing listen it is a quick and easy way to spread your antique waverly wax around when you have water I could have just dunked my brush in the antique waverly wax and then some water but spraying it down a little bit of antique waverly wax and then we painted it on up and it looked like this once it dried I'm taking a little bit of waverly's white chalk paint here and just kind of going around the edges to add a little bit of depth and to kind of bring out the tumbling blocks so it just gives it more of a branch feel for me you guys don't have to do this step if you don't want to once this dry I came back in with some little accent pieces these are just laser cut pieces that I had and some little half of beads and glued them on to the piece in random sections you could color yours you could put glitter on yours or add greenery any of that would look Good as well I just wanted to add these and keep it as neutral as possible and I thought that the laser pieces would pop out having that white in the background call this one I'm calling this little mini glam lantern okay okay so we're gonna make our square we're gonna make our little square you're gonna need two of these little squares for this ornament and I'm very meticulously putting the hot glue and the wood glue in certain spots so they do not overlap in case I have not said you want to make sure you're mindful with this because they will cancel each other out and then your block could just fall apart at some point it might not be today but it could be three days from now or a week on the back of this first little cube we are going to or square we're going to add on our little like I don't know they braces little hallway pieces to the other cube <laughs> or the square I don't know why I keep calling it a cube it's not a cube at least not yet but I took two tumbling blocks and put them on the bottom and then did the very same thing on the top and then I put the other little square right on the top like this and then we have our bottom and our top of our little mini lantern here's where it's about to get a little bit tricky and we're gonna need some little baby cubes from Dollar Tree we're going to on the very top of this tear the cubes inwards so they all in each one of these little corners start you know tearing inward and upward inward upward also be mindful because people if you know Dollar Tree wood items they are not all created equal and neither are these cubes <laughs> they're all different sizes so as you're building your little tier inward and if they're not all the same size then it's a little bit lopsided it was too late when I put the very top one to really fix it once I had noticed it because that glue was on there and I was scared that it was going to just crumble. Also be mindful how much glue because I put too much glue on once I spray painted it. You can see little globs peeking out of the cubes. Doesn't look awful, but if you want it to look a little bit more high end, 
make sure you're being mindful of that and either scrape off your glue in enough time or just use less. This is what you'll have before you get it all spray painted or painted, however you wanna do it. I was not even gonna try and hand paint this. <laughs> I was like, there's too many crevices. No way I'm frustrating myself. So I spray painted it, let it dry. I'm taking a little tea light and I'm gonna glam it up a bit. We're gonna just take some little Dollar Tree embellishments and glue it on here and try not to burn ourselves because once again, we still don't have a little finger rubber things to protect our fingers. <laughs> now your tea light is not gonna stay in here, but you can see the bottom, how the switch, you can still see the switch. So see how this kind of moves around and it'll fall right out. You do not have to put a lot of glue, put a tiny bit. See how I just put that tiny bit, such a small amount, and it is keeping that tea light in place. But it will also allow you to just pull the tea light out and replace it if you want to reuse this next year. So, or if the tea light dies, whichever, you know, whatever one comes first. Glue one or wrap one your hanger to the top of that little block when your lantern. People, I don't think you're ready for this little Tumble Block snowman. I know I wasn't ready for how cute he turned out. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, we are going to layer our tumbling blocks three high, and then we're going to glue them together so this way we have six together total. For our chest area, we're going to need five glued on top of each other and then glue them down on top of our six. The head and hat area is a little wonky, but you'll need two tumbling blocks like this and one tumbling block to go across kind of crooked. Now what you're thinking, Brandy's head's really small. I know it kind of is, but it's gonna work out. You'll see, still super cute, okay? So put your little tumbling block on here, glue it together, and then we're going to glue the two to the front of the chest of the tumbling blocks because, again, we're not gluing it the same. Look at that glue. <laughs> Look at the hot glue just sticking out there. All right, focus, Brandy. Glue your tumbling block head to the front of the chest so it's all going to line up just like this let it dry for a little bit before you get wild and just start painting it okay you could totally spray paint this if you want i'm just going in with the waverly white chalk paint and doing the bottom portion and then coming back in with the black paint and doing the top if you spray paint it you spray paint the whole thing just you know go over it with your black paint on the hat you know this is our little corn cob mimicking nose okay it's a little floral piece i think i got the floral thing from dollar tree however i have zero skill when it comes to applying noses look how crooked this thing is seriously brandy wow <laughs> So I ripped that bad boy off and attempted this again. It came out much better the second go around. I'm just using a Sharpie to draw the little face on. I wanted to keep it super simple so everyone could recreate this. So I just drew his eyes closed. Don't forget your cold buttons and your scarf. This year I'll think about how I'm so lucky to have a place that I can come home to yes i am on my way we'll put our differences people for this tumbling tower block diy we're going to be creating the nutcracker for the build we're going to need a lot of two by twos and i just used a paintbrush with a little bit of wood glue and some hot glue this way we had a long hold and an instant hold so I could just keep going. I'm gonna be completely candid and say this might be the last Tumbling Tower Block DIY that I ever make. It was very tedious and in total took me over five hours between the build and the painting and the details. I also let it set for 24 hours to completely dry. So this ain't gonna be no easy peasy craft, okay? This is gonna be time consuming, tedious, and you're gonna need a little bit of patience. So I love y'all. <laughs> Here we go. For our top hat, you're gonna need a total of eight blocks and you're just gonna glue them up together, set them off to the side, and then start creating our face. Again, another eight blocks. However, we're going to just 
put them sideways. So we got our top hat, we got our face, then push them to the side. We're going to make our body using two sets of five tumbling blocks for a total of 10. Glue them together and then put them the opposite way of the face. So we got our top hat, our face, and our body. So now we need some arms, right? So grab you four tumbling blocks. We need two for each side, and then we're going to put them on their side. Now it's time to make our bootay, and we're gonna need four tumbling blocks just like this. And this way he has a nice little round rump to sit on because he is a shelf sitter. In case you did not know, he is a nutcracker shelf sitter, okay? So we need to make sure he had a nice bootay and some legs. This is the top part of our legs. They're going to be constructed together just like this. And then here's like where the knees are. You know what I'm saying? Like we're bending here. So we're going to need a total of four so this way our, you know, the bottom parts of our legs are pretty long, you know, they're pretty long. And now it's just time to really construct everything together using wood glue and hot glue. And don't forget the feet, people. I did use some tumbling blocks to make feet. I put two little tumbling blocks next to each other and I did leave a little hanging in the back for the heel. Now we just really have to put everything together and I use the same you know wood glue and hot glue and people in case you're wondering and you want to ask me in the comments do yourself a favor don't because I will ignore you if you ask me how many total tumbling blocks did I use <laughs> to make this. I don't know. <laughs> this crap oh my god it turned out really cute and i love it but mm -mm. no i won't be won't be constructing anything like this ever again out of tumbling blocks oh and i did pop a neck in there i did pop a neck please bear with me with the whole build i was i didn't have no blueprints as i was going about this and that's another reason it took me so long to get the build because i didn't know exactly how i was going to make this so there is a lot of footage that i didn't even pop in here from stuff that i was gluing together and it just didn't work so once i got the build down i then was able to just kind of give you guys the really edited version to get the nutcracker body this thing was looking a little flat to me so i did take four tumbling blocks and pop right here on the chest so once we have our design and painted the jacket will pop out just a bit. I wanted our arms to stick out a little bit, so we needed to make some shoulders. I had these little blocks that I picked up from Dollar Tree and used these, again, applying some wood glue and hot glue, and then did glue them just a smidge higher than what I had the tumbling blocks. This way, it looked like we had some shoulders going on, and I will tell you, these were really frustrating. I had to go over these several times, adding more wood glue and hot glue. They kept detaching, so there's probably a better way to attach shoulders. However, at the time, this is what I had accessible to me, and this was the idea and the look I was going for. But just a heads up, if you go to recreate this, it will be the most frustrating piece. When I had these attached, I then just grabbed the arms and placed them right on to these. Now, what I would recommend that I would do differently is at this point, I would just quit. I would quit and then take wood glue and put it all over those arm joints and let it dry overnight before continuing to glue the rest of your project or I would glue the rest of the project and then do the arms last and then let it dry. But either way, they kept getting a little wiggly as I was attaching everything else. And then as I was going, you'll see here, I am like, okay, let me add some glue in here. And then I started to take some of the wood glue and paint all along the back because I was getting nervous because of the arms kind of popping out a bit. I wanted to make sure that I was putting braces to ensure that this was not going to fall apart. And I'm sure as many of you know who do create tumbling tower block crafts, it can be so sad when you spend time building it. And then if it's not put together properly, a piece falls off or later or something and it happens. So I wanted to make sure as I was sharing this with all of you that I'm letting you know the issues that I'm having and what I would do to fix it. So if you go to make this at home, yours is definitely sturdier and you won't have any issues. However, mine's doing pretty good at sitting next to me right now. But 
the build itself was very frustrating because everything was newly glued. And trust, when I had this completely put together, I went over the entire thing with more wood glue to make sure that this was going to hold together. So the next day when I went to paint it and had to put the details on, we did not have any issues. These are the only colors I'm using. And if you don't have the Dixie Belle gold gilding wax, just use some gold paint or you could also use that rub and buff stuff. When I got to this point, I couldn't help but feel like something was missing. And I'm like, you know what? I want to keep this piece kind of a little modern, but he needs a nose. And I found this at Dollar Tree recently. And I thought if I just nip a corner off of one of these little pieces, it was going to give me the perfect size nose that just protruded out. And no, I did not introduce some lighter shears. Look at me. I completely forgot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Let's just pretend it never happened, okay? I won't tell nobody if you don't. I had these in my stash and I'm like, we're gonna use the little gold bits to add some accents onto our nutcracker. And this was absolutely tedious <laughs> as well. Are you shocked? Because you shouldn't be. It was definitely tedious rubbing these little joints on there. They were not sticking as well as I would have liked them to as I'm rubbing. So then I had to keep pressing them on and then I'm like please don't break off even though I know I constructed this pretty well but you still got to wonder I took that gilding wax and then kind of just drew some little accents around where the neck was to make a collar around the boots to make the top of the boots and to give him some little shoulder pads and of course I had to add a little mustache people for all the trouble he sure turned out pretty great. doing we are making a gift box so really simple lots of tumbling blocks we are going to just add one to the side of our base which is three you'll start your base out with three and then layer around the three be mindful though because once you get to that last one see how I'm struggling to get it in here on the corner you're going to want to do this piece by piece now you will notice I am not putting in my wood glue as I go here too much too much too messy I started to try to do that I was like this ain't gonna work out right Brandy so I did end up having to pop one of the tumbling blocks off to squeeze in that last third for the top and then came back in and just applied all the sides so here's our little box we have and then I'm coming in with the wood glue and squeezing in all the little tiny cracks and around all the bonds and I did let this dry a full 24 hours well overnight I let it dry overnight before I came back in to spray paint it. I decided I was going to keep it really simple with this one and just add you know one of these little tiny mini gift top thing I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> some ribbon a little red finger bow and that was going to be it for all the embellishments you could really do so much with these gift boxes and make a ton of them.
Go for ahead. this next one, I had a subby approach me about making a very similar tree to this that wasn't on Pinterest, so I found this one. And I was going to initially make it out of wood, and I didn't have time, so here comes the tumbling tower block DIY. I initially was going to do this and the other one, but for the wood one, I actually wanted to drill a hole straight down and put it on a dowel, and I just didn't have time. It's been a crazy week, people. I hope everyone had a good holiday week, by the way. Um, and and I, I'm so thankful that I was able to get this crunched out. So this is the base for our tumbling tower block tree. And we're going to use one of these Dollar Tree little blocks to put right at the top. And I'm just going to take some wood glue and piece this together layer by layer. Do be mindful of how much glue you're smushing in here because you'll have more to clean up later. With the little base of our tree, I'm actually trying to glue. <laughs> My wood glue wasn't coming out. It, I need to get a new bottle. That one's getting all dry right up I gotta keep cleaning it out I took some of these little Dollar Tree blocks and then just glued them you know four on top four on the bottom I thought it was a cute little stamp I don't show it on camera but I do take antique Waverly wax and put it all over the tree very lightly and then put some laser cutouts at the very bottom People, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this tumbling tower block Christmas DIY mega video and enjoyed the new and the older projects. As always, I appreciate you so much and until next time.